Good morning, everyone. So welcome to another episode of Liquid Brain. So this is the part two of the understanding of the VCF file and a bit of background on the varying calling format and varying calling methodology in terms of uh, genetic analysis and bioinformatics. So today we're going to talk about the metadata of the VCF file. So if you have missed the first video or you don't really understand why it's a VCF file and why it's varying calling, you might want to head to the first one so we can get up to track of where we are now. So today we're going to just look into the VCF file format, particularly we're just going to look at the metadata as the, and their relationship with the data directly. So if you open up a VCF file, which if it's a very small VCF file, I think I'll include the sample VCF file down in the description below so you can download it and open up with your notepad file. So if it's a small, a small text file, you can easily open it on your desktop with a notepad or text edit and so on. But usually uh, VCF files are really, really big and it's really hard for you to open directly with a notepad. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm just going to include this one, which is actually the example given by the manual. So it's only have a fine line of data, but a lot of metadata that we can look into. So first of all, all metadata are preceded by the two hashtag over here, as the young people said it. So everything with a true hash or power sign is the metadata, while the header line of the data has a one single uh, power sign over here and all the data doesn't have anything in front of them. So you can actually differentiate, easily differentiate out them based on the what based one is on the beginning of the line. So uh, just some basic understanding, very straightforward. The file format is VCF version 4.2. So if you are looking at a slightly different version, it might look slightly different. You will need to consult the manual for that, but the concept of it should be roughly similar from one to another. Okay, so the file date is what is the time where this report is being generated and what is the source and references that the program you use to generate it as well as the genome reference that you use to generate this VCF file. So of course, there are also the context that you're using for the alignment. Uh, there's a partial to the phasing, which is part of the experiment and the analysis methodology that you use. It will change depends on how you want to do the experiment. And this come the important part, the info, the filter and the format. So let's go to the filter first. So filter are relatively straightforward. Actually, I have one over here. So filter are relatively straightforward. So filter just represent the quality of the sequencing. So when you sequence a genome or you sequence a contact or any kind of DNA, RNA, they will usually attach with a quality in a fast kill file. So that has been, that has, uh, that's another video by itself, but if it's, but usually we just do a standard uh, filtering, let's say that uh, quality below 10, we want to kill it off. So you can see on the second line of the data here, the quality is three. So it means low quality sequencing, uh, we, we don't want to include it. So in this filter, it will not say a pass, but rather which criteria does it fail on? And yes, there can be multiple filtering condition in the file format that you use. In the example here, they have two. The first one is Q10, which is the quality below 10. So that's the frag quality come from the machine and some algorithm of the sequencer. And the second one is uh, S15, which is less than 50% of the sample have data. So if only 50% of your sample have that mutation at that, at that situation, you do not want to consider it. Uh, of course, the 50% here is just an example. It really depends on what you're trying to see. And let's say if you are doing a comparison between a tumor and a normal cell, you not you might not want to use this filter. So you know, you might want to just not use this. You might use a different sample. Let's say uh, I only want when both of them have data at this line so you can direct compare them. And these are all uh, these are all things that you can add into during the program so that when they do the filtering and they'll calculate differently based on that. So they're, they're all changed in the program. If you already have the VCF file, you can't go in and change the line. It doesn't work like that. Okay, so the second important one is actually the info. So info is the information of the sample as well as the data itself. So let's go to our info over here. So info has uh, as many lines as you want and there are many type of data you can include. So the sample provider here have six different info that is built into the analysis. The first one is the number of sample with data, and the second one is total depth, and so on and so forth. So their, their understanding is the same. I'll just talk you through the first two. Okay, so the first one is number of sample with data. So that is represented by the number NS. Okay, so 
Remember the NS and the second one is DP. So that the, that's the depth of the sequencing. Okay, so if you don't know what is the meaning of the depth of the sequencing, it's just how many times it appear. So if you have four, one, two, three, four reads, which is it could be the same sample with multiple reads. If it's been covered four times, means the depth will be four. So the higher the depth, the more significant the 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 changes the mutation is. And if you have only one or two, sometimes it's because of just random mutation and it might not be significant in the sample that you're looking at. Okay, so the rest remain the same. But if we actually go into the example over here, so you can look at this is the two that we have, which is the um, NS and DP. So there are many types you can use. The, the two of them are just integer. So number means how many, uh, how many samples are in that has data in this case. And there are also the, the depth of the sequencing. And beside just the integer, you can also have a float, which is a uh, number with decimal point. You can also have a string, which describe what are the situation, in this case, the ancest ancestral allele. And you can also have a flag, which describe the DB, SMP membership, or the HM2 membership, and so on and so forth. So these are just part of the analysis of Glorinum. So we're gonna focus on the first two just for just to ease our understanding. Okay, so if GD, these are directly related to the data over here. So you can see the first one in information, and as the first line of the data, remember one line equals one mutation, as we see. So as seen over here, so that single line over here actually represent a single line in the VCF file directly. Okay, so NS equals to three, means that three sample uh, with data at this mutation point, and NS equals to three, NS equals to two, and so on and so forth. So that's just mean how many sample they have found to have this mutation. So second one is the depth, so how many times it appear. So same thing is how many times that read appear at that position of mutation. Okay, so that, that's basically it. So we, I think it will be a little bit clearer and easier to understand once we go into the example below. Just keep your understanding that this just tells you what's inside the sequencing and what is the example outcome. It will be relatable once we go to the example. Okay, so the last one is actually here called format. Okay, so format are very, very similar to what we call uh, the information just now. It just tells you the, the information about that. Uh, that experiment. Okay, so let's go to the format over here. So the format are uh, genotype field specified format should be described below. So the possible type of format field, uh, which uh, did a completely terrible job at describing. <laughs> so let's go back to the example. I think in, in, in human terms, it's just that how do you want to represent the changes? Okay, so the first one is the genotype. So similar to the info just now, uh, they can also be in strings, integer, or flag and, and so on depends on the need and requirements of the analysis and there are different acronyms in this case GT is representing the genotype uh, GQ represent the genotype quality DP is the read depth and HQ is the holotype quality so we're not going to look at the quality we're just going to look at GT and DP just to make things a little bit easier to understand okay so the first one is GT so genotype you can see uh, we have three samples over here NA0001, 002, and 003 directly. So each of the column represent different samples that you pipe it into the analysis. So let's look at the first one. You can see GT, uh, which is the genotype in the first sample is 00, zero. the second sample 1 slash 0, the third sample is 1 slash 1. So there are different type of representation. Again, just understand that the genotype will go through that in the sample when we reach that. Okay, so same with the read that, which is in this case DP. So you can look at the third one in the column, which is this one, this one, and this one. So this has one, this has eight, and this has five, and so on and so forth. So that is just the representation of the thing in different sample. So why are we doing it this way? Because it's way faster and way smaller if we just define what they are and we just pipe the numbers and description directly into the sample. So this, the format and info, uh, it's just a way to save space actually. So instead of uh, saying that our uh, number of sample of data, we just put NS equals to three, we know there's number of sample of data and we just pipe the acronym directly in the metadata. So in that case, it will be very easy to communicate a certain issue without wasting a lot of computational resources to store that file. 
So once we are done with the header line, actually I kind of explained the whole data line as well. Let's go to uh, the, the actual data over here. So the first, so the actual data, I'm going to go through the header, which is this line. Let me just shift this down a little bit. So here. Okay, so they are the chromosome, the position, the ID, reference, alternate, quality, filter, info, format, and sample name, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go to the first one, which is the chromosome. So in this case, uh, it's just the, the number of the chromosome or the contact that you put in. So 20 means the, the chromosome name is 20. So that everything that is on the 20 chromosome come from the same chromosome. I think that's more than straightforward enough. Similar with the position, so that's a position on the chromosome itself. So if your chromosome 20 has like a million uh, base pairs or a million nucleotide, the position just represents how long is that. So if it's 1,000 here, it's 5,000 here, 6,000 here, and so on and so forth. So it just represents the position. So the position are also sometimes important because certain positions are specific to a specific uh, SMP ID, which is why the identifier here is important. So I have included one of the ID over here, which is uh, RS6054257. In this case, it is 6054257. Where is the, where do they put the name already? Yeah, some, somewhere here. Yeah, I don't know where they put the name, but when I Google, this is the one that come out. So you can actually see here in the, in the line that the ID is RS6055257. So that has a very specific, this is chromosome 20 at 85729. So let if see is that correct. So 85729. So obviously they are not the same. Uh, 85729, so 85729. No, it's not the same. So it might be different in the way that they don't where they start. It might be different because of the reference they're using. But the position, the ID is the same because they're the same position. No, they're the one that do the similar functions and so on. I'm not too exactly sure about the classification over here. But if you do know, leave a comment down below. I'll, I'll love to know that. Okay, so there are also different ID over here and there can also be some sort of micro satellite and so on and so forth. Okay, so next one is reference basis. So reference basis, as the name suggests, fairly straightforward, is just uh, what is the base or what is the nucleotide in your reference. So if your reference is, we're using uh, this one, uh, 1000 genome pilot NCBI36. .fasta. So in this case, the reference will be on chromosome 20, on this position, on this ID, G will be the reference genome, alternate will be A. So alternate, as the name suggests here, is the list, is the, is the nucleotide of the sample. So reference, reference, alternate, uh, sample. So we will, we'll, I, I, I understand that it's a bit confusing. It will be much easier when we go to the sample. We may go through the example of the VCF format down below. Okay, just, just get the concept out first ready. Okay, the next one is quality, which is directly related to our filter just now. So usually you just set the condition and no need to care about them. As long as they are over a certain quality, you include them unless there are special cases and then you look at it by the with the case by case basis. But in general, we just set a, a standard and then we never look at them again. Let's say 10% and so on. Okay, so same with filter, quality and filter is just uh, does the quality fits our filtering? If it's not fit our filtering, you will have a condition like just now here. So if it pass or it fail at Q10. So quality and filter, fairly straightforward. It's just how we gonna include them. So I already talked about info and format. So info and format are just the condition and situation inside the analysis and these are the might be very very important thing that we need to note or not important at all depends on what you're looking at but they are there to represent that what is the information on that line and what are the information in the different sample so yeah because information is one line among all the sample they have the same information but format might vary in individually in different sample so that's the main difference between info and format Okay, so um, I'm just gonna go through one example and we're gonna go re-go through this all over again. Okay, in this case, we have three sample over here where we have ATCGA, that is the reference genome. Uh, the first sample has ATGGA, the second has a deletion, 
and the third one has an insertion. So that are the type of mutation that we are looking into. So by just looking at the first data over here, you can actually see there are already three type of mutation and they are all at chromosome 20 at the same position, uh, three, two because of the deletion and so on. There's no ID because this is just an example. It doesn't tie to any reference SMP study. Uh, so the reference is C and the alternate is G. So if you look at line one, this will be how it is represented. And uh, two, oh sorry, I want to make a correction here. These are not three sample. These are just three example of the mutation on the same sample, just in case. Okay, so the second one is, uh, the reference is TC, but alternate is only T, means the C, you can see this is TC over here, there's only T here. So the alternate is T here because uh, C has been deletion. So you can see the difference here, you can already know there's a deletion. So the first one is uh, transition, if I'm not wrong, or transversion. Yeah, one of it. I forgot the exact naming already. Okay, so TC and to T is a deletion, while TC to TCA, you can obviously see there's an insertion. So these are basically the, just, just the easiest way to look at a VCF example, and I'll follow up with the rest of the example in the next video. So just to go for a recap for the video tutorial for today, we go through the metadata of a VCF file and the data line, some very, very basic example of the data line in a VCF file format. So in the VCF metadata, you have all the file format, you have all the ID, you have all the filter format, and so on and so forth. And these are directly correlated with the data over here. So in the data, you have chromosome number, you have the position on the chromosome, you have the ID, which refer to a certain uh, well-studied reference SMP, and the reference refer to the nucleotide in the reference FASTA, while the alternate represent the alternate mutation that's in your sample and so on and so forth. So quality and filter represent, uh, does it fit a certain quality for you to include it in your analysis? And info represent a single mutation, while format is the mutation difference between multiple sample over here. So uh, we're gonna go through the example and some of the sample question in the next video. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching, bye.